My friend, have you ever wondered what life is like without hope? Imagine waking up every day and wondering if you would eat that day, or if you would eat tomorrow, if you would even be alive tomorrow, if your country would suddenly go into revolution, or if your entire economy and the way of life you had known would crumble before your eyes. That's the way people live in much of the world. And yet we know that there is hope. There is hope in Jesus Christ. People in tens of thousands of cities in Europe and the Russian Ukraine are receiving hope right now because they are receiving the gospel of Jesus Christ. But friend, we must hurry. Thousands each week in the Ukraine are turning to false religion instead of Jesus Christ. Think with me for a moment. If you could go anywhere in the world and in just two weeks see 6,200 people saved, distribute 15,000 Bibles, place 350,000 gospel tracts in waiting hands, and distribute 30,000 flyers to eager hearts, would you go? Would you help someone else go? That's what happened recently to the ministry team of the International Board of Jewish Missions under the leadership of Henry Binnick and Dr. Orman Norwood. But these men need your help. We see the economy so bad now and we're wondering how long will this last? All we know is what we're trying to do right now, and we're, we're determined to continue to come back and to do the work that we've done in the past. This time, I'm really privileged to have with me the president of IBJM, Dr. Orman Norwood. Dr. Norwood has been with IBJM for over 20 years, worked with Dr. Jacob Gardenhouse in many countries, but it was necessary, I felt, uh, for him to be here to see something that is totally different in the matter of winning Jewish people or others to Jesus Christ than ever before. And Dr. Norwood, let me just thank you for coming with me. I know that this is um, a little different than what you experienced in the past. Why don't you give us a little bit of your impression of what you've found already happening? Brother Benick, I have been amazed at the openness of the people, the willingness to respond to personal witness, the way that the literature is not wasted. A lot of times we invest in gospel literature. We pray that God will bless it and it will not be wasted. Uh, out of the thousands of tracts that we gave out last night in the square in Kiev, uh, I only found one that had been discarded and put into a trash bin. I picked it up, it was still clean, I gave it to another person. I didn't find any on the street. They were all in the hands of the people. Not only are the people willing to receive literature, they want to talk about it. They want to discuss the matter of God and the Bible and Jesus Christ. And to me, this is, this is a miracle. It's an open door that we have. And I'm so glad God has led you, Brother Henry, in leading these trips because I can truly say that if you invest in this ministry, uh, the thousands of Bibles, I've never seen so many Bibles in one bus in my life, packed and jammed. We had so many Bibles in that bus right now to give out that you can't see the people in the front of the bus if you're sitting in the back. And this is thrilling. And the Word will not return void. But praise God for this ministry. For the seventh time in just two years, IBJM has returned to Russia. This time, 6,000. 200 souls were won to Jesus Christ. That's well over 6,000 more than the average Baptist church will see one in an entire year. Many of these precious people were Jewish converts who recognized for the first time Jesus Christ as their Messiah. Thousands more received the Word of God in printed form in their language. This trip differed somewhat from former trips. This time we not only ministered to the Russian people, but we actually preached to the cults. The enemy was present on every hand. Two portable microphone systems allowed us to take maximum advantage of street preaching opportunities. Each morning our group of 20 would go to the busiest area of the city and preach the gospel. One of our men began to preach and in just seconds groups of 50, 75, and 150 would gather. Our message was very simple. IBJM's president, Dr. Orman Norwood stood on a stone ledge and preached the gospel. Sixty-eight people came to Jesus Christ. But the cults were present with us and in mass. In Nepopetrovsk alone, 24 Mormon missionaries were at work. They worked tirelessly and with great results. As you watch this production, 
Many are being snared by their false doctrine of delusion. A group called White Brothers stood by Henry Binnick with faces like scorpions and tongues set on fire of hell as they shouted to the people, he is possessed of the devil, while Henry preached. But thank God this time the people listened to the gospel. Evangelist Ed Carter, a former football player, preached to thousands on the streets. We visited the city of Venitza for the first time. Because of new government regulations to control the cults, we were only allowed to preach in large halls. Eventually, they allowed us to preach on the street. We handed out 15,000 flyers announcing the meeting. Henry's message was entitled, What is a Hebrew Christian? The hall was filled and 1,658 people were saved. Everyone present received a Bible. Later that evening, we were invited to a local Baptist church for fellowship. And as we sang together, God knit our hearts one with another. In Nepopetrovsk, we distributed tens of thousands of gospel tracts. Many came to Christ through our street preaching. Missionary Mike King led an Orthodox Jew to Christ. Misha, our Jewish song leader, desires to work in Germany with IBJM as a missionary to Jews who have relocated there. We interviewed him for that purpose. Pray for this dear man. In the city of Kharkov, Igor, who was won to Christ by Alan Lord during our last trip, was there to assist us. And I want to thank all American preachers that came to this country, that left their families, spent a lot of money just to go to this country and to show with us the Word of God. The first Bible that I had was presented to me by an American. And people in this country, they really need Bibles. They need to know this Word because many of them are just ignorant. They don't have the information. And as the doors are open, more and more cults from different countries are coming here. We have Mormons, we have Jehovah Witnesses. There are a lot of them, and people are confused. People need really authentic information. And I challenge other people come to, our, to this country and share with us the gospel. Many converts in that city continue to grow in Christ and minister to their people. Here we passed out gospel tracts, preached on the street, and conducted mass meetings. Possibly over three quarters of the people in attendance were Jewish. In Kharkov, we were challenged. Due to lack of fuel, our flight to Moscow was canceled. We arranged passage by train. Three of our men stayed behind to conduct the last service. One thousand people trusted Jesus Christ. God has once again performed a marvelous work among us, but ours is not the only voice in these cities. Every day they pass me by. I can see it in their eyes. Busy people filled with care. Going who knows where. On they go through private pains, living fear to fear. Laughter hides their silent cries. Only Jesus hears. People What 
could be too great a cause for sharing life with one who's lost through his love the grief they bear. They must hear the words of life. Only we can share. We Brother Henry, people really do need the Lord in days like this, and I'm sure that God has laid this upon your heart. We want to thank you for all of the work you've done to stir our hearts. Now, what can we do? How can we get involved in this ministry? Well, Dr. Norwood, we never really planned on continuing the effort that we have, but we're going to continue until the Lord returns or the doors are closed. In just a few weeks, we're going back for another exciting ministry to the Ukraine. And when I say exciting, I mean exciting as in emotional, people being saved, handing out literature, many people coming to our meetings. And so we are just going to continue doing the work that we're doing and just a few weeks from now go back. Amen. Friends, I would like to urge you to have a part in this ministry. We at the International Board of Jewish Missions are following the vision God has given, Brother Benick. And all of this work is an end-time ministry. We need your help now for Bibles and for financial support. And may God lay upon your heart, as he did upon mine when I was there just a few weeks ago, about this great and wonderful need. Brother Henry, thank you for helping us to see the vision. Friends, I can still remember the man standing in my face making this sign, saying that I was possessed by the devil. This man represented thousands of cult members in the Ukraine who were leading people with their false doctrine. And now today, while we're here in America, they're able to do much more. We must go back. I never intended to do the ministry that we have. This is God's ministry, not my ministry. I almost feel like the Apostle Paul as he said that you should know that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. There's many people who we've led to the Lord who could be influenced by these cult members, and so the time is short. We must get back and do the work that's possible. Will you help us in this very end-time ministry? Time is short, and these cults are very, very active. Mormons are everywhere, Jehovah Witnesses, this group called the White Brethren. We must do this work now. Please help us. Help us reach Ukrainian Jews by providing funds to purchase Bibles and literature. You may purchase full Bibles at $1 each, New Testaments at 50 cents each. If you give $1,000, we can purchase 1,000 complete Bibles. For $500, we can purchase 1,000 New Testaments. Please designate your gifts to IBJM Russian Ministry, P.O. Box 3307, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37404. 
If you want to go with us, call Henry Binnick at area code 615-698-3417.